One quarter of physicians use social media daily or multiple times in a day. Almost all of them have an account on at least one platform, whether it's for business or for personal reasons. Now this isn't too surprising since it's a fast and easy way to connect with their clients, but it's important that they communicate with patients appropriately on these channels. If not, it could lead to privacy violations and may disrupt professional relationships. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics and today I'm going to share how not to communicate with patients on social media. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that button below. While you're down there, hit the alert bell icon next to it as well, so when we post new helpful content, you get notified. As you probably already know, posting protected health information without consent is always unacceptable. You can't publicly reveal a client's data if they didn't give you any permission beforehand. But what happens if someone reaches out to you on social media with a concern? They must be giving you permission to discuss their condition with them if they've contacted you. Well, this still doesn't make it okay to discuss PHI with them through social media channels. These platforms aren't secure and people don't realize the risk of sharing sensitive information through them. It's true that they want to connect with their providers through social media and get answers online instead of going to an appointment though, but this opens up the opportunity for them to overshare. If the patient's or your account gets hacked, the information that they sent you could get leaked out into the public. Instead of continuing the conversation, when they message you, encourage them to set up a visit either in the office or through a telehealth platform. Besides, you can't be diagnosing people online anyway since you haven't evaluated them thoroughly. Remind them that sending private data through social media isn't actually secure and let them know that you can't diagnose without a proper visit. Your patients aren't supposed to become your friends. Obviously, you need to have a friendly and welcoming attitude so that they feel comfortable when they come visit you. But the goal isn't to have a close personal connection with them. Becoming friends with patients on social media causes boundary issues when it comes time to treat them. You don't want someone to abuse their privilege as your friend to try to get special treatment from you. It can also confuse what's necessary for you to keep confidential if you see the person as a friend. This is why you should only maintain a professional relationship online. To keep the work and personal relationships separate, it's best not to follow your patients at all. It might also be worth having two separate accounts, one for your job and one for personal use. That way you can keep your private life separate from your business. This helps you distinguish between what's appropriate to share with your client audience as well. That way, there's no blurriness with the relationship that you have with your patients. Finally, it's inappropriate to discuss patients' personal choices that you see on social media. Like I already said, you shouldn't follow your clients on these channels at all. You also shouldn't creep on their profiles to investigate their health choices. This is called patient-targeted Googling. It's when you search their online content to use in the clinical setting. You might end up finding that they have unhealthy or reckless behaviors. While it can be useful to know how their outside experiences impact their health, this crosses boundaries. You'll feel the need to address this in their next visit since you want them to be healthy, but confronting them about something that they didn't directly share with you can embarrass or upset them. This threatens patient trust altogether. Now, of course, something you stumbled upon might be a legitimate concern and you have the best intention to help them, but you need to navigate how to reveal these discoveries while being sensitive to their feelings and privacy. Social channels are a great way to reach your patient audience. You can share credible information to educate them on health topics, which has great benefits. But certain ways to communicate with patients on these channels isn't okay. It's not safe to discuss PHI since these platforms aren't secure and since you haven't evaluated the patient yourself. You also don't want to cross any professional or personal boundaries that could impact their privacy. If you'd like to learn more about communicating with patients on social media, reach out to eTactics. And you already made this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below. Well, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to our YouTube channel.